yeah, obviously it feels good to be back home. Um, before I joined, I, I came back home. I've been getting a lot of uh, love from the people that support Orlando Pirates, asking me to come back. And I didn't say no to them, I didn't say yes to them either because I wasn't at, at, at Orlando Pirates at the time, you know, so having coming back, I brought a lot of people's wishes into fruition, <laughs> I would say that, and yes, and the love I've been getting from coming back uh, has been amazing, you know, everywhere I go, it's just nothing but love I get and receive from, from the fans and people that love football in general. There's nothing specific that kept me from coming back, you know. I think uh, timing is everything and it was the right time for me to come. If I had come earlier, maybe I wouldn't be here right now. So I'm just grateful for having the opportunity again to be back at such a magnitude of a club. And just being back, is, it's been amazing. All my experience overseas has been great, you know. I left the club, I left Orlando Paris to go to France with the blessing of the chairman, you know, and it happened so quick that, you know, I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to the, to the fans or to the team, my teammates at the time, and a lot of people were shocked, but, you know, it was a great opportunity, great experience, and it's molded me into the way I am today, you know. I had a period where I wasn't playing regularly and it helped me believe in myself more than anybody else did, even my close family, my relatives. So those are the challenges that I took upon myself, you know, having to, to, to give your best every week, even though you know you're not going to be selected for the team on the weekend, you know. That was my motivation to be ready for what might come next, you know, and I think that's the best advice I could give anybody, you know. <clears throat> Never give the coach a reason to why you're not playing. Always be ready so that you ain't got to get ready. And that for me has been the difference for me, you know. I think a lot of people can, can be a testament to that because they can see my work ethic, my attitude to training. If that's uh, how it's supposed to be, then I don't think uh, I should have any reason to why I wouldn't be, I, I shouldn't be in the team or playing. The, at the, my, the previous time I joined the club, there was a lot of senior players, a lot of serious men, not football players, serious men, in the likes of Siabonga Sangweni. Uh, Lucky Lekhoati, you know, those guys are real men before they are footballers. And that uh, discipline that they have as men in their personal lives transferred on the field. And those are the things that rub off onto players if you're willing to give an ear and listen, you know. I've learned so much from those players, I still have contact with them and, you know, now being the senior player, the group of players we had back then was a balanced group similar to what it is now where the, the harmony of the, of the group is, is quite good. Everybody jowls with each other. There's no egos, even though we all have egos as, as men. I mean, it doesn't get in the way of our work or, or our personal agendas or we don't get offended by each other's egos or any of that. So I can say that's very similar, but in the difference from the previous group and this group is just, yeah. <laughs> it was a special bunch, you know, having to play with my peers at the time and now being the senior players. It's a different approach for me, you know. I had to learn a lot from the players that were before me, that, I, that were at the club when I joined in the first time. And I had to learn a lot of things that I didn't know about the club, you know, and the passion and the desire the supporters have for this team and, and what it takes to be part of this team because uh, a lot of things that players now that are years are starting to realise how demanding the, how demanding the supporters are. And that's no matter what mood you're in, what condition you're in physically, emotionally, when, a time, when it's uh, time to play the match, all they care about is the result. Yes, important, it's important to play well, but winning is the most important thing for the fans. So I could say that's been the difference, you know, having to learn that from when I was here the first time and making players realize that right now, you know, and make sure that you grab the opportunity with both, ha both hands and realizing that on weekends, the 90 minutes you're given to play, uh, the, uh, the supporters' happiness depends, in, depends on you, on, on the, the effort you're willing to give. And sometimes supporters are not only happy, or they're not unhappy if you lose, but if the, if the effort is good, then that's enough for them to be content with, with the outcome of the game. So I would say that's the, the difference between the two teams. 
Well, for me, the thing that drives me is the fact that I'm part of a, a team sport, you know, and I know I cannot play alone. And being selfish is not, is not part of, of who I am, you know. It's always about giving guidance and, and motivate the players that are given the opportunity because you want that for, your, for, for, you want that for yourself as or well from them when you're given the opportunity. So I think uh, understanding the fact that I'm not playing alone is what drives me that I need my teammates and that they need me. And I know a lot of my teammates or some of my teammates see me as somebody they can depend on. And even if I'm not on the field, I still want to feel like they can do that off the field with what I can give them verbally or, you know, motivate them in any way possible. And it's just being positive, you know. I'm, I'm hard on my teammates. They know me at training. When it comes to training, I'm, I'm always moaning about the small, small mistakes we make. And, you know, it's all about your attitude to, to your teammates and to your colleagues and your peers. I mean, without them, you cannot achieve, you cannot win games. I cannot score goals if, the, if somebody's not passing me the ball, you know. So having that understanding and having that connection with, with each other, you know. I'm not close with everybody, but I feel I have a good uh, understanding with everybody that I get along with most of my teammates, if not everybody. And it's just to, to know the, the time to have fun and the time to be serious, you know. And, to make them be in that mind frame that now it's the time to work. And I just try to make sure that we're closer to that than further away from that, so that when the game comes, we're ready to, to teach our opposition a lesson, because ideally that's what we're trying to do. We have a, a way we're trying to play, and we try to believe in the way the coach is teaching us. And executing is the most important thing at the end of the day on game day. So whatever we train during the week, I just make sure that we focus enough to execute it to the best of our ability. Prior coming to, to join Pirates, you know, I've been, I've been training individually on, on myself so that I, I have to be ready when I, when I join a club that I knew I would join, which was Pirates. So leading up to that game, I've envisioned what happened. <laughs> it's crazy, I envisioned while I was training, preparing for, before I joined Pirates, I envisioned what would happen in that game because I knew when I, I, I knew I would join Pirates before it happened. And I knew that Pirates was playing against my previous team. My first game was back on my father's birthday that I lost a year ago, and that was something special. So having to do the second leg again, yeah, it was written in the stars for me to score, you know? And yeah, what is going through my mind is, yeah. <laughs> um, I can't, it's hard to describe, it's something that it's in the. It's 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 something you cannot you cannot rewrite. You know, nobody would have thought I'd scored after everything that's happened with me. And I know a lot of people got a lot of things to say, negative and positive. But at the end of the day, it's what you can produce on the field. You know, everybody has their opinion about certain things, about certain situations, and I don't like to delve too much into those things for too many people to know about. But one day they'll know the truth about what happened. But for now, <laughs> what I showed on the field was the truth what happened, you know. It just shows you that class is permanent, you know. I'm, I, wouldn't allow, I wouldn't allow myself to, to sit at a team where I wouldn't play regularly just for the money. Yes, money is important, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, it's how relevant you want to stay and how, how serious you are about what you, what you love doing. For me, football has been my bread and butter if it wasn't for the opportunity I've been, I was given in the beginning to start my career. I don't think that football has, would have given me the life I have right now. So what went through my mind that day was just pure hard work and, and being patient and waiting for my moment. You know, um, the way I acted in that game was no uh, hatred towards nobody, no, no hatred towards now, nobody at the club. Nobody at the, nobody in charge of the club, nobody owning the club, you know, it was just passion I have. I love the game and I'm sure I, a lot of people can say that I play the game with a lot of passion. My celebrations are not uh, made up, I don't practice that, it just happens in the game. If you look at the Nedbank final in 2014, I cried after the game, after I scored. Because we played four finals that year and we only won one, so that's emotion. That you can't describe, you can't, uh, you can't 
decide to do that now because that's what you've planned to do, you know, so most of my goals is just the celebrations from the goals I scored. It was both based off emotion and that's just what it is. I play the game with a lot of emotion and I think that's why I can uh, do it uh, so e make it look so easy for, for people that watch it with the eye, you know. Um, I love the game, man. <laughs> I love playing the game and that's all I want to do. My initial thought was in my celebration was to turn my shirt back to front to honor my dad being a Pirates fan. So <laughs> I managed to do that. And all my teammates were surrounding me, we were celebrating, supporters were losing their minds. And then as I walked back to the center, I couldn't reverse my shirt back because it was too tight from the sweat that I've had, you know. And I'm fighting with myself, trying to reverse my shirt back, <laughs> walking to the halfway line, and the ref is trying to start the, restart the game. He sends me out the field, and obviously that frustrated me because I thought, I mean, for what? Why am I being sent out the field? And my initial thought was to play with my shirt like that back to front until I got the chance to swap it again, you know. And he sends me out the field, and then I take off my shirt because obviously I have to put it on the right way. And as I looked across the stadium, across the field, I almost had a moment of deja vu because it wasn't planned with what I did. I'm waving my hands upside, up and down, you know, in front of the Sundowns bench, uh, supporters. It was only because I saw the Pirates fans still losing their minds on 90% the, on of the stadium, around 90% of the stadium, because the only section behind me was where the opposition section was, supporters. So me waving my hands, was for my, 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 the, our supporters to make a noise because the majority was us. So when the noise started happening, our level of intensity rose. And then we started playing with more hunger and desire. But as soon as I jumped in the field again, the referee allowed me in. You know the pressure you get when you're about to land or the, when you're flying, the cabin pressure you have? That's the feeling I had from just the sound and the noise that the fans were making. That was one of the spe most special things that I've achieved, especially coming back in such a short period of time, you know. I think uh, if I didn't win the net, if I didn't win the MTN with, with the London Pirates, we don't know what people would have said, because <laughs> moving from one big team to another, there's a lot of expectation. But fortunately, we'll never know what they would have said, because, you know, I've won, I've won the MTN and being part of the group midway through, you can say halfway through the MTN tournament was, a, was something I was ready for, you know. Um, it happened to be against my previous team and yeah, we, we overcome that hurdle. And I think the derby was a, was a good, uh, was a good uh, rehearsal for the final because in terms of occasions, it's, just, it's similar in, with, with, uh, with the support we have. And the derby game, players weren't playing the game, they were playing the occasion. And if we have to give them the benefit of the doubt, it was a lot of players' first derbies, right? So that frustrated me in the way we played, not being intentional, not playing with the right intensity, slowing the game down at the wrong moments. So leading up to the final, that was my, yeah, that was my uh, concern and I made sure that I raised that uh, worry from from my mind first and from the, my teammates' mind so that they know when we play on the final, we're there to win. Not to show the fans how skillful we are or how much long passes we can make or dribbles we can make, but it's about winning the game as a team. And I think that was a great uh, display of that. You know, um, the boys were amazing on the, on the day of the final. And I've told the guys, even on the field while the game was on, like, your life changes after winning silverware with Orlando Pirates, you know. It, ch it changes for the better. Like, certain places, you, people treat you different. You can't go certain places because it's, it gets overwhelming with the tension you, you, you draw. And that's just how it is, you know, and that comes with what, you've, what you're willing to achieve with, uh, with Orlando Pirates. So, 
that was important for us to, to, for me also to be part of, to win, you know. It was a great start for me as well, having gone through what I've needed to go through in my life, in my career. And yeah, hopefully, you know, I can, I can help contribute to more silverware this season. As a senior player, as an attacking player, who's responsible, partially responsible, or mostly responsible for contributing to the goals of the team or assist. That period was just part of, of football, man. You know, um, if you've been in the game for so long, you know that uh, periods like this happen in football. But he tried to make it as short as possible if it's a goal drought. And you focus on, on keep on improving on, 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 on the ways you try to play. And I think the most important thing was taking the positives from the games we, we struggled to score in. I mean, if you look at the, the way we played in the games we struggled and the games we didn't win or drew, was just based on being composed in front of goal, you know, in the final third. Maybe the second last pass before the actual uh, assist. If that was a bit more composed, then the assist would have come for the goal creation to come, for the chance to get a, a shot on goal to come. So, what was positive, even though the frustration of us not scoring the goals was that we played well, we created chances, and of course, based on the chance creation, you're not guaranteed to score. So, that was the most positive things out of everything that has happened with the, with the drought we had of not winning, drawing or losing games because we haven't scored. So the fact that we played well and we create those chances, other than not creating chances or being in positions to score, then it would be another problem. Then we have to first focus on our patterns of play to get to in front of goal, then focusing on, you know, just that one aspect of us not scoring. Yeah, it's, it's exciting times for me and for us as a team to be playing on week, every weekend. I mean, a lot of fans now, uh, their, their hope is be, being reignited, the faith in the team is being reignited and you can see uh, what the stadium looked like as well, as well. I mean, the support has been amazing and that's something that I would like to extend my, my gratitude to the fans for showing out in numbers, you know, even though the result isn't a guarantee, the fact that they're there to support a team they love. And you know, it's, it's been a, it's, it's exciting times, I'm looking forward to it, I must say. <laughs>